Hello and welcome to Live at Five uh, from The Late Challenge. Me, Gareth Roberts, him, Paul Cope. Uh, we are in a new studio this week uh, and we are on our channel this week as well. Uh, big thanks to This Is Anfield for the last three months or so where we've been doing this show over there. We're now going to do this show over here. Um, and we are thinking of also migrating it eventually soon to our Patreon, because uh, we've got to try and make all this work, which you probably worked out anyway. Uh, but for now, it is live, it is here. Uh, we've got some comments through already. Uh, the, the very first one we got was whether um, we would jib our birds for Jürgen Klopp. Um, <laughs> I, I'm I'm not ready for that personally. What about you, mate? It's a no from me. It's a no <laughs> from Paul Cope as well. Um, today we are going to talk about Liverpool's convincing 3-0 victory over Brentford at Anfield. Uh, we're going to ask whether that's now swept the decks of negativity after the draw at Luton and the defeat in Toulouse, or do some concerns still remain? Uh, we have got Man City at Man City next up, of course, albeit with another shitty international break in between. So how are we feeling about that one? Um, and as I say, we, we always check these comments. I've already read one out. Uh, we'll read more out if we get good ones. So get them get involved. Uh, put, your, put your comments in the comment box. We are reading them live. They're over here on this screen right now. Uh, and if you're watching it later or listening to it later, well, you can't get involved, but come along at five o'clock next week and you can, and you might get a shout out. Um, okay, first question for you then. Right at the top there, I said Liverpool 3, Brentford 0, and I described it as convincing. Were you convinced? Is that a fair word to use for the win at Anfield, do you think? I've only just read your agenda, started reading your agenda, which is professional of me, isn't it? Mm. And I, but I was thinking on the way over, how would I describe it? And um, when you bear in mind... I, well, I, I often do this thing where I go, no one's saying enough about this and then realise I don't read that much news these days. So I don't know what the fuck other people are saying. But um, and I've just realised as well, we need to put an 18 plus thing on our, our starting soon things to people, stop people complaining about swearing or me swearing. But um, I, when you think about the team that was selected, the injuries, the bench that we had, and the fact that Brentford is a very tricky game, like to come out of it winning three 0 is, I'm not sure convincing is the right word, but it's impressive. Like it's the the fact that we sort of rolled that game over, and by the end of it, it was just sort of we made it look run of the mill. I think that's a sign of a very good side. Mm. You make tricky games look like it was it, you were just always going to win it, and I think as you said in the intro, off the back of the draw at Luton and getting beaten to lose that we did that with those injuries, I think is is really, really, a really strong sign. I think Klopp hinted at that in his, in his press conference. He said today could have been filled with possible excuses. Mm. He says Cody uh, playing in midfield, the wind, the opponent, the set pieces. And I saw just a team who wanted to win this football game and we deserved it. Uh, Liverpool were without eight players due to injury and suspension. Thiago uh, by Cetic, Jones, Robertson, Gomez, Canate, Gravenberg and McAllister were all unavailable for this one. And for me, you know, walking up to the ground, there were defo you know, banana skin vibes about it because, mm -hmm. uh, you know, I, I, I'd done a show on, um, I did a show on Radio Merseyside on Friday on their sports show. And I was saying on there, you know, if you looked at Brentford's results, they went eight without a win. Some draws in there, like, uh, but then they won three on the spin, including away at Chelsea. And I thought, it, it basically looks like we're playing them at the worst possible time here. We've had a bit of a blip. They're on a high. You know, I could see it going a bit pitong. And, 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 you know, we talked before about sort of, you know, kickoff times and all that kind of stuff. And I, I think Jürgen's right to, like, throw things in, you know, that affect the vibe. They do. And people always don't like it and it always gets, like, crowbarred into really shit banter or really shit analysis. Oh, he's mentioned the wind. 
Well, yeah, if you boot a footy up in the air, yeah, and it's dead windy, it gets affected by the wind. Like, you know, really basics, I, you, I, you know. I think people who say things like that, I've often thought this. I, my dad gets or, lots or, of mentions no, but on you these say shows, The but... other one as well is, like, I wrote something about, like, the atmosphere and, you know, <laughs> keep referencing Mingle lately. He did, he did that, um, what you call it? The, 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 what do you call it that he made the oh, thing like the algorithm thing yeah like, like he made yeah. like a like a um that's not algorithm it's an algorithm why, why can neither of yeah. us think of the right word for watch, that watch watch it maths, like a, a theory equation of, 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 of for the atmosphere and we'll have to put Mingle's it up one at of some our point. patreon subscribers for those yeah we'll have to know. put it up at some point because it was good and it was about like you know level of opposition kickoff time what day of the week all of, and, and it does feed into it and I, I wrote something about it like in depth and like one of the first comments i got back was some like some manco and you're making excuses for your like atmosphere no mate i'm, I'm, I'm saying we're humans yeah, this is uh, one of my favorite things there's a difference I, i've had this so many times in the past few years it drives me mad now there's a difference between an explanation and an excuse and an, ex an excuse is trying to like blame the explanation but the explanation is just explaining why something happens yeah. it's not using it as an excuse it just explains it you can still go exactly and we could still do better blah blah blah. and you the thing about the wind it's this has driven me mad for years as well i love it when we have these as like therapy sessions like, I always think it's people who've never played the sport or never tried the thing that they're criticising in any walk of life. My dad was one of those people. Like, he, I always reference this very same thing. <laughs> and I've probably over-dramatised this in my head over the over the years, but I remember being with him at the match and it was when Gerard was like peak Gerard. And two people went in for a challenge in the centre circle. The ball spun up into the air about 50 metres up in the air, just straight up. And as it came down, spinning, straight down it touched the floor and Gerard hit it with like the out Joe is the outside of his foot in a half volley so literally it touched the floor he hits it and it he drove it at the goal and it missed the crossbar by about an inch I'm watching that and I went oh like I'm going oh my god that is unbelievable my dad went should have hit the target <laughs> and I'm like, Dad, yes, you're, and, but I was like, Dad, you're a man who's clearly never, he'd never played footy in his life. He's just watched footy. Like I went, you're, you're someone who's never tried to do that. If you've tried to do that, I, and look, hands up. I used to be the same before I'd ever played golf. I'd watch golf and be like, looks dead easy. And then the first time someone went, Gwed, hit one of them little tiny balls with that tiny bit of metal then. I was like, fucking hard this. Yeah. So now when I watch golf, I'm like, these are unbelievable, these people. That's but the thing, isn't it? But if, it? if you've never played in the wind, you don't understand how bad it is, do you? Well, and sometimes I, I, if you're not at the ground, like I yeah. know that now, we talk about this, I'm watching at home. So I, I know for the cues to look for, because obviously you can't see wind. So I'm looking at the corner flag. Yeah. And when the corner flag's going or wild... Or even the linesman's flag as well. Yeah. Then you're it depends, like, where, you know, it depends which way around it, it, it's blowing and all that kind of stuff. But like to put it into context, I mean, I don't know why we're going on about it, because we won 3-0 and he wasn't using it as an excuse. But I've just driven up here along the strand and my car was shaking we were talking about it and before. the traffic lights were shaking so but genuinely as I walked in I said to Jacob before I, I genuinely had the thought in my head I'm not heavy enough for this wind <laughs> like I could feel it picking me up off the floor but you know like Anfield's not that far from the river yeah and like we call it a river but, and I've had this before I call it the sea and people go it's not the sea and I'm like but it's not a river is it like it is a river but I mean like if you look at the map of Liverpool or the map of Merseyside where the river is well it's basically the it's, sea it, isn't yeah, it? it's opening out into the <laughs> Irish Sea yeah. so what I'm saying is it's quite open to the elements Anfield's quite near the coast and so it isn't a mad idea that he says the wind affects it. Okay, we've explained all that now. We'll yeah. come back to actually talking about but, the game. But just to make the point though, Fuck it it's hard to play. <laughs> it's hard to play a, a game, which is what it is, with a ball full of air exactly. when the wind's dead strong. Exactly. Because guess what? It moves it round. Like there was a game at the weekend, and the, the lad kept one of them where you're trying to put it down for the corner, and the wind blows it out of the like the the service, and you're like. What do you want me to yeah, do? Yeah, keep that's, how, spot. Yeah. that's how strong the wind is. Yeah. Uh, someone's asking if I'm drinking berries. I certainly am. Um, but yeah, so there were lots of reasons, I think we're saying, aren't we, that, you know, coming into it, you thought, mm, not sure, might be one of those days, all of that kind of thing. So to deal with it so professionally. And I just thought, I, I think what Klopp says there is right. So there's all these changes. There's all these players missing. But I thought all the big players turned up. 
they all looked like they were on it, whether that was a bollocking from the manager, whether it's their own mindset, whether they've looked at it themselves and said, we've had two results that aren't great, we're about to have an international break, we need to sort it. Whatever the reasons behind the scenes, I, I thought they more than did enough to come away with the victory. And, you know, I, I like I liked Thomas Frank. I think he's a good, you know, good manager. Seems I was going to say that, yeah. I really like him. Um, and, when we've been, we've, we've mentioned this on our on our main show that's coming out later this week. When you talk about the different managers, you get fucking like Poster Cogley, who we both like, but like there's like this, everyone's creaming themselves over him. Thomas Frank, I just think is goes quietly in the background and he's just dead sound. Like even when he was talking about the endo thing, did you see what he yeah, said about really it? Yeah, really good, wasn't it? Really yeah, good. It was really good. It was like in context of what other people have been sent off for, I think it should have been a send or not, but I don't think it's a red, <laughs> yeah. but, but it's just got to be consistent. Yeah. And you're like, you can't really Shout. take issue with that, no, can you? You I can't really say you're not bad, you yeah. know what I mean? You're like, oh yeah. And then he's going on about like, you know, Salah being one of the best players in the world and all this. And you're like, it's just dead Salah. level-headed, isn't he? Yeah, yeah. yeah. And, and even about the, about the game and, 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 you know, we're looking for, re- looking for ways we can describe this victory. I've called it convincing, you're saying maybe it isn't. He talked about it saying that, that Liverpool are brilliant in moments and that because of that, and they can't match that. So, you know, you look at Salah's first goal and it's like two-touch football and then Salah's in, bang. And I actually think, you know, Nunes' assist for that, by the way, is is a lot harder than he's maybe given credit for. Yeah. It's just like, oh, yeah, he's just... But yeah, like, it's a bit of a mad, like, twist and it's like a mad angle that he puts it on for Mo to well, run onto, isn't it? Even even him being aware that Salah's there, yeah. he's got his back to him. Yeah. So, that, and I know there's people been making more of this and the stats are showing this now. The link up between those two, we've people have been getting onto it all season and it seems to be getting stronger. Seven was, assists and if Nunes yeah. for, for Salah, And yeah. that's the best example so far, I think we've seen of that because that's almost the... Remember Lampard used to talk about this. How Joe, you would you would practice certain things, and he had a he had a pass that he would play in the center circle where he would just hook it over his left shoulder backwards, like Joe, even without turning around. No, when there was no in that, like Drogba, they would know through their patterns of play that when the ball is going to find its way into Lampard in that position, Drogba just legs it, like he knows what channel to hit. So Lampard knows he can just hit that channel. And do, you, do you ever remember that goal by, I think it was by Ray Outen, and, and I think it was against Derby County at home. Couldn't tell you the year, though. More, more importantly, the bit that I'm getting to here is that Beardsley got the ball into him, and he, he like, he didn't look, and he sort of, like, fell, span, and, like, hit this ball, sort of on the turn, looped it to like the other wing and right out and like ran onto it and put it in. Yeah, I know which one you mean. And it was, I, I, I love that goal. Yeah. Because it's just like, it, it's what we're talking about here. It's like, but I, but I was obviously a lot younger when I was watching it as well. And I was like, how? It's like magic. How did he do that? How yeah. did they know he was there? Yeah. <laughs> and it was yeah. like, and I still love it now. And like, I get it that they've trained together and like, you know, and he'll know he's making that run. Yeah. But nevertheless, But there's so much in it as well, isn't it? Because oh, you've yeah. still got to pull it off. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And that's the thing about Nunes in this. Like, they, they talked about it on Match of the Day that his his link up play, his all round game has developed so much since last year. And I remember talking about this when he signed. Like, we were clearly signing him as a rough diamond with the belief that our coaching staff could get the best out of him. And we've already seen how much he's improved in that time. In all parts of his game, his work rate, I mean, he was always a hard worker, but his ability, Klopp referenced his defending off the ball in this game. When he referenced defending, he referenced Nunes first, yeah. which was really interesting. He did graft, yeah. And you then you've got that. touches like that and that pass, just phenomenal. Yeah, 100%. Someone's thrown in because we were talking about the Mersey. Well, there's a few comments about uh, the Mersey. Tidal River was thrown in, uh, just so you know, just so we're sure on that. Uh, someone's thrown in the closest football club to the Mersey. Do you know this one? Closest football club to the Mersey? Yeah. Marine? Tramia? Mm. Everton now? But it will be, won't it? But it, not Before yet because they haven't moved yet. Stockport County? Oh, uh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I thought you'd know that one, no. mate. Um, but yeah, that's, that's in there. Well, I mean, what else have we got then? So yeah, we we we'd huffed and puffed, puffed that loot and lost that to lose. We've come back with a three 0 and it's great. There, you know, there was a bit in uh, like we were in the ground there and we were like, mm, you know, it's it's been okay, but like it, you know, it's it, it's all a bit Sunday two o'clock kickoff. It's a bit cold. You know, we've watched those two performances that come before. I actually think 
that Tierney, who's had, you know, never ending stick from everyone, and rightly so, the referee. I actually think, you know, his decision to book Mata, a Mata mad Basil faulty reaction to it. Um that really lifted everyone. And I, I can I can't honestly remember a time, the last time, when a referee was referenced by name by the cop. Because we were singing, fuck off Tierney, fuck off Tierney. And it wasn't like, you know, like it wasn't like you're not fit to referee yeah, or, yeah, yeah. you know, all of them ones. It was specifically at his him, name, to yeah. him, his name. Um, and then like, you know, he, he gave us a, uh, he, he, did, he did eventually like give us a decision and he got a, we love you too. And, he, we, and nice. I, I like that, you know yeah, what I mean? I like that, that. All, all that was a bit old school, but but that mad, you know, the toddler tantrum from Mata. That was brilliant, by the way. It was, it? He's a mad fella, isn't he, Mata? I love him. He might be he's my favourite player on the slide. Just like all legs, isn't he? It's, he's just a comedy just a character, with, isn't legs he? With do you, head watch, on do the you top? follow his, do you follow the Twitter account? No context, no, yeah, Mata. It's brilliant. And like it? when you just little clips from training and stuff, do you hear he just comes and like whacks people on the back of the head and stuff and they're like, fuck off. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I just, I love all that. It's so fucking childish. But that seemed to like that seemed to like lift everyone. That, mm. um, and yet the, the whole the whole sort of uh, you know us us aiming some higher his way. Um, did you see the Zerbi over the weekend? So <laughs> he hates eighty percent of English referees. Uh, we we bold that like I know, yeah shout like. Yeah. Like you, you, I feel like someone should get to you realize 80%. they are, and you realize they all still will referee you. I know, yeah, from, from now on in, yeah. I mean, I think he'll he'll go back on it, won't he? At the next time, the next press conference he does, he'll, he'll there'll be some explanation behind that once the PR lads have got hold of him. Mm. But with with that, with what he said, and with us, you know, sort of having a pop on an official by name. Um, by the way, I thought Klopp was was restrained. I was watch- I was watching him because you know I was given that he's a- he's got some history with him with referees. You know the cameras watching him, all the rest of it. He just seemed to be like maybe he was keeping the chimp well and truly tied up. Do you know what I mean? It didn't seem to be not an out of him. And I thought, mm, I wonder what, I wonder what's happened there. Like has someone had a word? Is he just doing it himself? I think he's doing a lot of that recently since the Spurs game. And I just wonder whether it's a shift or whether he's, it's just like... Someone said, you know, though, when you went off on your own after Spurs and started asking for replays and we didn't say to say that, don't do that. Yeah, well, <laughs> I, well also, like, I, I, do you know that bit where he said, like, I've realised the only thing that happens here is my bank balance goes down. Mm. I don't know whether there's just been a, a do something flicked in his head, the switch has gone and he's like, what's the fucking point? Or whether he's just, like, restraining himself loads and at some point there's going to be this massive explosion. Yeah, maybe. I, I, what my point on this is, I just wonder, you know, do you, do you think the way some of them behave and act and everything it is unnecessary? Like, because I was watching Tierney yesterday, because, you know, you couldn't not really, because he makes himself part of the show. You know, like, what are you booking Matt up for there? Like, that, you know, he's won the ball. He's won the ball and then you've booked him. And like, I, I was like, I was getting all these apps up on the cop going, what he booked them for? And on one of them, it said for arguing. And I thought, oh, well, okay. If he's being booked for that, I can understand it. But he's right to argue because it, it wasn't didn't a foul look, in the first place. Didn't look like that on the telly. It Did looked he like he was it booking him for the for challenge. The challenge. Well, he, because I, if it's a foul, the lad's through. Like, you know, if, he, if he has taken him out, I think he's booking him because it's it's he's taken him out. But, but when you watch it, it's the like, way, what I mean is though, it's all like, you know, the puffed out chest and yeah. the, the theatrics of it. And we, had, we actually clocked, yeah, me and the lads who was by that um, on Mo's second goal, where there was a the bit of a question of whether um, it being kept in for the cross from the left back. Simicast. Simicast, there you go. <sighs> um, you know, there was a bit of a question about whether he kept it in. So the Liverpool players are celebrating, and and the lads by me said that Tierney so like did like a shush to one of our shush players. Them. Yeah, did he? like if he did do that, who are you, mate? Yeah, do you know what I mean? Like, yeah. what? Like, why did he act like that? Yeah, you there's know what? A, there's definitely I don't know where it's come from as well, but like it's it's been going on for a while now, isn't it? There's definitely an ego thing in referees in our country, and that must. Do you want me to talk about someone said the other week in a comment, which I really liked? I've been thinking about it. When we said, like, the, the, about the no knobhead rule, and someone said United have got a knobhead rule. Yeah. It it appears that the referees, like the PGMOL, has a knobhead rule, doesn't it? Like, it, how many how many referees would you say are just sound? And is it just that it, that, that attracts that type of person to that type of role? Do you know what I mean? Maybe. 
It could be that, couldn't it? I mean, you know, it, I, I don't want to sort of like, you know, bro, you know, tar them all like, but you know, there is a bit of a question about why you'd want to do it. Yeah. Um, and, and I think the amount of stick these, you know, the other side of that is the amount of stick they've took and the mad things that have happened to referees at like amateur level, you know, there's almost like a problem, you know, like, so I was just going to say that like, and this is slightly off topic, isn't it? But I, I, I don't think there's enough being talked about that we do, we're, we're not going to have referees soon. <laughs> no, yeah. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. Like the, if, if you don't create more referees, if you don't attract people to be referees, who's going to referee I mean, they're games? on good though, it's got to be said, like, by the way. So, you know, if you reach... Well, they're like, on good though in the Premier League. Yeah, so that's what I'm saying. So if you've reached Premier League level and you're given a foul for, for that against Matip, then I, I, you've got to expect that everyone's going to be on your back then and is going to give you shit because... I don't get. I don't get why. Anyway, let's move on. It wasn't. It wasn't that big a deal. It was more the fact that that lifted as I thought. Yeah. It got the stadium going. It got us singing daft songs. It yeah. made everyone laugh a little bit. And then we mentioned before, you know, the first goal from Liverpool is an absolute beauty. Um, you know, the the, the opposition manager talking about quality of Liverpool in moments and the quality of Mo Salah both demonstrated in that moment. Um. Brian Mbemwu, Mbemwo, how am I saying it? Mbemwo. Oh, here we go. That was it. I knew how to say that this morning. And then when I've come to say it now with the microphone, it's I can't say it. back of your head. It's like, yeah. it's like Homer, isn't it? I always think about this. When Homer Simpson learns something new, something else falls out the that back. Was, I thought you were going to say I where was, he's got the, the, the symbols the, banging well, in his head. as well. It's just a combination of the two, as well. isn't it? Um, but yeah, um, um, he should have scored, shouldn't he? It was a good save by Allison and all that, but you know I, I, I think I, I think nine times out of ten strikers in the Premier League score from that position. Uh, but you know, I'm gonna I'm gonna go the other way only because I think we still don't appreciate just how good Allison is. Oh, I do. I love him. Like, He's brilliant. No, I, I don't mean generally. I mean in one. I reckon if you said to strike, do you know what you've just said? Nine out of times out of ten, striker will score that chance. I think most strikers would say to you, against nine out of ten keepers, yeah, but not against him. Like he's that good. He is that good on those in those moments. Like I remember watching him years ago and seeing a bit about like Joe, how he plays compared to other goalkeepers. And he does this thing where like he presses the ball. Like most goalies wait. They just wait and see what the, what the striker does. But what Allison's learned to do and trained to do, and I think Edison does the same thing, is they, they're waiting for a trigger that the striker does and then they attack the ball. So it, it's like, the, the strikers all of a sudden got no, got no time. Mm. And I don't think that happened in this specific situation. I think he was more just making himself big. But I, I think there's that, he's got that Peter Schmeichel thing about him where you you imagine as the, the striker, you, you're bearing down on goal and you're like, oh, I've got loads of time here. And all of a sudden, you can't see any of the goal. Do you know what I mean? Because yeah. you've got this massive fella in front of you who's just stayed up tall. Um, but I, I take your point and I think often, often, People will take that chance. I'm not. I'm, I haven't watched it back enough to. I feel like there was a lot in the moment. It was like, oh, that's Trent's fault. He got through, but nothing was really made of it. And Klopp didn't really make something of it. He just said it was a good ball. Yeah, yeah. it was a good ball. Um, and I think I think what Klopp said afterwards as well was that maybe you know he was a bit fearful that we'd get caught by that more often. Yeah. Um, because which sort of says to me a little bit as well. By the way, that. You know, we we talk and analysts talk and you know whatever you know newspaper writers whatever they all go on about yeah but like it's easy to get at Liverpool because they do X and they leave that gap behind like they'll know do you know what I mean <laughs> like it's part of the plan yeah. going the other way isn't yeah. it do you know what I mean so it's like oh they got caught like that again yeah they know that that's a thing it's a calculated gamble do you yeah. know what I mean it, it's because like you know because the other thing about about yesterday was you saw their side and I think they had about like four lads who'd play that centre half on the pitch and you're like gonna be one of them then is it yeah so again to get through them and to get through them ultimately in a comfortable way the game could have actually been a lot worse. You know, like there was a bit of a stale period, like first half. But ultimately, like I, I felt like in the end, like Liverpool controlled it. Obviously, there was a couple ruled out for Nunes. Uh, one looked a bit tight. Uh, the other, less so, I believe. You know, I got, I got yeah, all Yeah, the first one was was literally like, you know, half an inch. A on toe, a yeah. The second one was, was clear. Um, but again, I think these games... I, I don't think footy fans generally, all of us, we don't we don't appreciate how many of these games you have in a season in which you're boss, where 
it looks a bit flat. It's not. Do you know, like you, you always know. look back with rose tinted glasses? 100%, don't you? Yeah. Like in the year you won the league, it's we feel like at the year we won the league, even with Klopp, you battered everyone in every game. You know, you never. It's largely a moment game, just, game, isn't it? Yeah, of course. Especially it is. across the course of a season, it, it, it's why like if there is a four four or whatever, that we all end up talking about it. But did we? you see that stat? I mean, that sums it up. Like Guardiola, one of the most successful managers of all time. That was his first 4-4 in his career. Was it, and he's yeah. managed like 890 games or something. Yeah. Because what's his big thing? Control. Yeah. Control the football game and then create moments and you win more. That's the whole point. But I think we, we're a mad f- fan base and I think most fan bases are a bit mad. We mentioned on our, our main TLC show that's out on Wednesday this week, like the everyone praising Poster Coglu for this, like going all guns blazing with nine men. No one's ever won anything playing like that realistically have they I mean I'm sure someone will throw the odd person at me in the odd competition but leagues are mainly won we've seen it loads over the years in the Premier League when we had Roy Evans as manager when Keegan was Newcastle's manager mm. leagues are won by solid defences everyone knows that that's that's not a like a groundbreaking thing to say is it and a, a solid defence and a solid team is more boring than a gung-ho team. There's it just doesn't of, look as exciting. Yeah, there's loads of bad stuff that gets said, isn't there? I mean, even City there, when you were saying that, I was thinking how many times have you or one of your mates or people you see online or whatever said, oh, they're not that interesting to watch, so are they? They're quite clinical and all this. And you're like, yeah, but if you're a City fan, like, they, they just won the treble. Like, do you know what I mean? Yeah. Um, you know, title three times in a row, whatever. But... Yeah, yeah. I mean, like, I know, I know what you're saying about sort of like, you know, there, there, are, there are loads of games that aren't that good. I've sort of been hammering that into my son a little bit because, like, you know, he started going a lot more now, and like, he's been fortunate that he's already been to some crackers like Newcastle away and things like that. And I'm like, not like this all the time, son. There'd be plenty of times you'd be freezing your bollocks off, going, "Why am I here?" Do you know what I mean? But you, but you turn up and you do it, do you think? And then, don't you? Uh, Klopp said afterwards as well, "We didn't play perfect football yet, not even close. But we fight our way through moments. We have to keep going with all the other teams until maybe March or April. And if we're still there, then we can start talking. Until then, you fight your way through the most difficult league in the world." So that's his take on it, but inevitably us fans, it's not quite the way we look at it, is it? And there's a reason, you know, uh, the table is published in every newspaper and there's a reason tables are, are all over the internet and all over Twitter, et cetera, et cetera. And it's because we like to look at them and see what's going on and mm-hmm. what we think. And the table right now shows Man City top, 12 games played, 28 points. Liverpool, 12 games played, 27 points. Arsenal, 12 games played, 27 points. Spurs, now fourth, 12 games played, 26 points. And then Villa in fifth, 12 points, 25 points. Man United in sixth. Woo! Uh, Flying. 12 so games played. So the weekend. Time 21 for his, points. Time for his new contract, isn't it? Yeah, Off yeah. I, yeah, there was that stat, wasn't there, about better him? Better than Klopp. Yeah, better points. start to his career, his career points-wise over Klopp. So, yeah, you keep going Sign with him. Sign him up. Yeah, yeah, he looks great to me, lads. But but when you when you know Klopp sort of like playing things down there, his knee and sort of saying like you know we're not playing great, but we are where we are. We'll keep going and see where we are. Now, when you're looking at what we've seen so far and and the, and the stats we know so far and the performances that we know so far, so you got like you know Mo Salah's got twelve goals, Jota's got eight, Nunes seven, Diaz four, Gakpo four, thirty five between them all in all comps. So, you you know, you can sort of say, well, I, I don't see goal scoring then therefore being an issue for us. And then you also look at that very same league table and we've got the joint best defence in the league right now. So they seem like, you know, decent, <laughs> you know, decent factors in a title. But, but I, I just put, like I woke up early this morning and I, and I put the top half of the table on my Twitter and I just put, not bad. That was it. No big, like, you know, bold predictions or anything. Just put, not bad. And I got a reply off Andy Mitten, who does the uh, United We Stand fanzine and known, obviously, as a Manchester United supporter, Manchester United writer, broadcaster, everything else. And he replied to it and put, not good. (laughs) (laughs) 
uh, which is quite funny. But nice. but what what that also meant was I then started getting some replies, some manks, and you got I got one that you know sort of made that massive leap that I was saying something I hadn't actually said. And it was like, you know, City, you're going to absolutely piss the league and you're not going to be anywhere near them and you didn't crowd cocky land if you think you're that. And I was like, mate, all of put's not bad. That's all of put. <laughs> yeah, well, it's all reading did, into things. Where did all that come from? Yeah. But, you know, surely if you're looking at that, what I've just said, and you've seen the stats so far, the goal score and the defence, <laughs> and no, I won't let it go. We would, <laughs> we would did all that space. You know, it's not bad, is it? It isn't bad, no. And it's funny, it's funny, isn't it? That like, I started the season saying I think City will probably pre- like just have an easy process to the title. I didn't think that procession. I didn't think they would run away with it. I just thought it would. They would steadily leave people behind, and we'd maybe finish second, but a distance. For him to say they will piss it after this twelve games. Well, they're not pissing it right now, are they, mate? We're only a point behind them. Yeah. And, and one of the key things in this as well, it, this shows how much how much trauma we've all suffered being in title run-ins with Man City. I'm already looking at goal difference. I'm already looking at going, we're only three behind them in goal difference. That's really important. And we're eight ahead of Spurs in goal difference. Because the thing is, when you've... The, the, this is a big thing for this. There, there are only two horses in this race who've run the distance, the course and distance before. And when you've run this course and distance before you know just how fucking hard it is. And I know Arsenal have run the course before and run the distance before, but fell short at the end. But there is, there's a massive difference between that and getting over the line. We know how to get over the line. And I know some of those lads have gone, but there is, there's a core of our team that we're still there and we've got those lads. And they know things like that goal difference is important as the games tick on and as the league ticks on. And it, it's interesting that even Klopp saying like, we just need to be there or thereabouts until March or April. Because that's that, when that's when it's won or lost anyway. And that's the thing, isn't it? We're nearly a third of the way there um, in terms of uh, of the league so far. The next game, City. Um, we, we could obviously go there and lose. We could go there and win. We could go there and draw, whatever. But even if we go there and lose, four points behind, third of the way through the season, lots of tough games out the way. Again, well, not bad. And that's where the Luton game was the disappointment, isn't yeah. it? Because we'd already been saying that lots of tough games out the way bit, and then we drop points at Luton, which is disappointing. But you can't get away from the fact that we have got those games out the way. Because look at City. We've got we've got Chelsea out the way. And in hindsight, people have started saying, you should have won there. Well, City have just gone and drawn. Ch- Spurs got beat by Chelsea. Yeah. So City have still got to go to Spurs. Well, if Spurs are in full... A full health at that yeah, point. Yeah, and it changes as well, doesn't it? That, I mean, that's the beauty of like, you know, that we get to come on and speak every week because everything changes all the time. It's like, you know, we all try and make these analysis like, you know, based on, well, so we played Chelsea right at the start of the season. By the end of the season, they might be fucking brilliant for all we know, do you know what I mean? <laughs> yeah. And a completely different proposition to what they were then. Yeah. But as footy fans, you don't do that though, do you? You just look at the fixtures, you say, that's hard, that's easy, that we should win that, blah, 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 blah. And like, you don't take, you, you just don't consider context whatsoever, do you? you know? And, and there are a lot, you know, injuries is another thing and all that. But I still love doing all this kind of stuff because ultimately I, I am a footy fan and, you know, I just like it. It's good. Well, look, the other thing to mention as well is, and people have been watching us do this over on with This Is Anfield since the start of the season, will have heard me talk about this. And on our own show, we've talked about this, about the defence and the, the worry about but not buying a defence midfielder and not buying another defender. Yeah. And the thing about Sunday was... I made up we won it and we kept the clean sheet with all those injuries we had but it's almost like a little warning sign for me do you know what I mean like or out the blue Robertson's injured who wasn't one of our injury prone players so he's out for a few months but then out the blue Gomez and Canate are not there mm. and straight away you're looking at it going we look a bit stretched here don't we What it only takes one little niggle here or someone to get sent off or and you're struggling and that's my concern with it still. Is I thought loads of people hanging. like up the levels though. You know what I mean? Like I thought, you know, you, Van Dyke was like back to Van Dyke levels. You know, yeah. there was a moment there, I can't remember it was against, well, and the reason I can't remember it was at the Anfield Road and I was on the cop. So I could see it happen, but I couldn't tell you who the opposition person was, player. Um, but he, he did that old school thing of like, 
he ran with them, ran alongside them, and you were thinking, is that lad, that lad's going to get a shot in there? And then he just like did that thing, the Van Dyke thing, just of just easing them away. Yeah. And you were like, that's the Van Dyke I remember. Yeah. Get in. I think that was the moment because, again, I questioned Van Dyke a few weeks ago saying he's, and it's hard because we're comparing him against his level, which is ridiculous. But I think over the past few weeks, we, he has slowly eased back to, and I think more a lot of people were saying this over the weekend, that's looking like Van Dyke at his level. Yeah. Not, not just playing well, but back to being unbelievable. And I think that moment is that is the moment where we've all gone. Ooh. Hello. I yeah. thought I thought we might have lost him. Do you, I thought just his injuries have taken the yeah, edge off him? Yeah, he was always going to be a left or below now type yeah. of thing. Yeah. And, and, and we just had to settle for the fact he's just one of the best defenders in the league, not a god. Do you know what I mean? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I, maybe it was just psychologically he needed to get back to knowing he's still got that in his locker. Like he can just do, because that takes a lot of confidence for a centre-back, doesn't it? To just go, I'm just going to match you step for step and ease you yeah. all the way. Because I, I know what's I'm well better myself. than you. Yeah. And, and he was winning, you know, he was winning, you, you expect him to win things in the air, but he was winning things on the floor as well, his passing, you know, right up there as well. And yeah, he, he was just very quiet and efficient and old school Van Dyke. So I thought yeah. he was great. Um, I thought, he, you know, like I, I've been, you know, very vocal on, I haven't been impressed whatsoever with Simakas since he's come into the side. Yeah. Um, you know, I thought he was, he was obviously had a horrendous moment against Toulouse. I thought he was poor in the derby as well. He was better yesterday. And obviously, you know, he's got, <laughs> he's got two assists to his name. I mean, the, the one where he's kept it in, he's done well, you know what Boss, I mean? Yeah. And, and, and to scoop that cross out from that position, you know, brilliant. And then and, and it, it, it makes it easy for Mo, doesn't he? Mo's just got to go, yeah, ta, nice one, nod that in. Um, to describe it as an assist for Jota, though, was a bit of a stretch, isn't I, it? I, I, I was thinking about that before. <laughs> I'd rather he got two assists for the first one yeah. and none for the second one. Like, I'm, I think that's one of the mad things about stats in the in the modern world. Yeah. Like, you can walk around and just pass the ball to Mo Salah and he puts one in the top corner from 30 yards and you go, got an assist there, there, lad. There, yeah, <laughs> You're like, sure. Uh, yeah. not sure that's as good. And you've got other lads who are like, I remember seeing this ages ago before we had Joe um, Chance created as a stat. There'd be lads like playing in teams where they're literally beating a man, squaring the ball across the face of the goal and people are missing it. And you don't get anything for that. But there's another lad getting a, an assist for what Simicas did. You must be like, oh, fuck off. There's, isn't there like expected assists? No. Expect, I, I meant to mention that to you last week. <laughs> it was in one of the columns, one of the tables you put up. Yeah. It's like, fuck it, I'll expect the assist. Yeah. What the fuck is that? I don't know. Well, the um, fuck, what the fuck is an expected assist? I don't know. I'm, we're not doing it. Because yeah. if, that if that's an assist that Simicas got for that, an expected assist, surely like... An expected assist is like when Mo headed it across the face of the goal against Luton. And, and you should and expect Nunes them to score. Pound it over the it? bar. That'll be one moment. Well, but it yeah, doesn't that also fall into 50p head. Well, stats, yeah, because he never even meant it. Because he never it. meant it. I know. So where, where in the expected assist is, is intention? I don't know. You'd have to bell that fella from uh, stats, Bob. And, uh, and I'm sure he... Let's get him. someone on. He does um, expect I, I wanted assist. to mention, where's he gone now? Uh, oh, yeah. John John Van Floyd says, um, obviously you've just been talking about sort of um, you know, your your weekly moan about uh, not buying more players in the summer. Um John John Van Floyd said there, uh, Kwanzaa's stepping up at the right time. I mean, I'd go with that as well. I, I think we we did a show, I don't know, I, I don't know how many weeks or months ago and back where we were both saying, I think, at that time, you know, great like but how good is he going to be? And how much pressure can you put on a lad? You know, and what can you expect from him and all that kind of thing? Mm. I think he's exceeded probably everyone's expectations, maybe even his own. I think he's done really, really well. Yeah. He's looked really good. Yeah, I do too. My my only concern with it, well, let, let's stick to the positive for a second. I think that's true. And I think he deserves a lot of credit. I think it's funny, isn't it? Like whether the, the coaching staff and the recruitment staff deserve a lot of credit for it or how much of it is luck maybe you just never know. Do you know what I mean? Because actually I've seen Colwell a couple of times, Colwell, Colwell, who we wanted to buy. And the times I've seen him, he's made massive mistakes. And you're like, he's clearly got a lot of potential, yeah. but Joe, we'd have bought him for a big chunk of money if we could have done. And would he have been many better than Quansar? Like they're, they're young lads and you just, you just never know, I guess. My only concern <laughs> is because of Simicass, 
Like I'm, I'll cover a fullback. I just, I just wish we'd have bought a lad. I, I wanted what I really wanted when I stop and reflect on it is, a, a James Milner esque player who can play in multiple positions. I mm. think every squad. If I was a footy manager, I would get one of those players. A lad who will get, you know, guarantee you seven out of ten and can play in multiple positions. Ideally, you know, if someone can play both fullback positions. So I mean, think of even this, like a Steve Finnan. You know, no bells and whistles, no fanciness, no, like just a very bog standard player who is dead reliable to play left back, right back, maybe a couple of other positions if you need them to, but can cover and fill fill holes. And I don't, I'm he not doesn't sure we've got that. Him, like, do you know what I mean? This fellow with, who's comfortable on both sides, two footed, scores, scores, reliable scores. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Get, get out. No, but you know what I mean? Like, <laughs> I, I think they go under the radar, those lads. So, like Milner, Finnan, they were all cheap players, weren't they? John O'Shea at United. I, I think you, you pick them up. Well, you know, I'm, I'm, glad, no I'm glad you sort of took the conversation here because I, I, wanted, to, I wanted to ask you about Endo because I've seen various takes. On, on how he performed. And obviously, like, the, you know, there's an argument that he could have got sent off again, having been fortunate not to get sent off against Toulouse. And I was going to ask you, for, funny enough, one of the things I wanted to ask you about him is, is there, a, is there an unreal, unrealistic expectation from fans generally that every player in the squad is going to be an absolute belter? Because I think the more I think about it over time, I think there is an unrealistic expectation. Because if you think of the size of the squad you need now to compete in all these competitions, and then you think about, you know, the the amount of sides, the amount of sides that have got money, where Liverpool are on compared to them, all this kind of stuff, all of those factors, all of that context, and then the stuff you always hear about, like an agent and a player now. They, they, they perhaps sound a little more, bit more savvy than back in the day. Loads of them don't want to just come and take the money and sit there. Mm -hmm. You know, we were talking about the other fellow, weren't we? We had um, Chelsea on the other show. Um, what, Carlton Palmer. Carlton Palmer. <laughs> <laughs> Not him. His namesake-ish. But, you know, like he's got off from City yeah. because he wanted game time. Yeah. And he's at Chelsea getting it. And he's at Chelsea scoring in the last minute from the penalty spot. So, so far, so good for him. So what I'm saying is, we've got Simicas who hasn't always been absolutely terrible. He's had, you know, he's done all right yeah. at times. The improvements upon him, you'll be looking at a fella who can probably get in the first teams then, aren't you, of other clubs. And he knows Robertson, you already referenced it yourself, is most of the time fit, most of the time playing. So what's he come to Liverpool for? And I think this, this is where I'm saying there's an unrealistic expectation from some fans at times where they're like, they want the cover in every single position to be absolutely brilliant to the level that they would probably get first team game time elsewhere. Mm. So there's a there's a balance there, isn't there? Yeah, and I think this is the bit where footy fans, including me and you sometimes, and we have to check ourselves and stuff, is we have this, if you think about it like strategically at what your squad list is, like say your ideal squad size is 25. I think what you've just said is right. Most football fans think your ideal squad is 25 belters, 25 yeah. world-class players. Yeah. But that's actually not true, is it? When you stop and think about it. I think if you if you don't think about it, that you would think, of course, that's true. Because if you're playing FIFA on your games console, having 25 boss players is great. But when you're managing a squad of humans... Having 25 amazing players isn't great. Because look at Chelsea. Like, yeah. they you get perfect example, live example, isn't it? It's like, oh, what's better than 25 boss players? 35 boss players? That's great. It's but like, even the doesn't thing, work, we, does we it? say, I'm, I'm, I'm being very broad brush here, but, you know, like we as in football fans will often say, or some of us will say, you know, yeah, but there are loads of money. And it's like, yes, aren't. But like once you've got the loads of money and you're being paid the loads of money and, and like you adjust to that norm, if you like, you're then surely going to be going, well, this is only a limited career. I don't want to fucking play. Do you know what I mean? Like, you know, we all joke about like the goalies or that are at various clubs, including the, the one at our own, where you're like, that must be mad though, just going in day after day and never ever getting a game or knowing you've really got a prospect of a game. And in that case, okay, they've probably just gone... Sam, Scott Carson's just taken the dough. 
and he's not bothered and he gets to sit on the bench and I don't know. I don't know what his life looks like, feels like. I can only assume from the outside. But, you know, there's so many that won't want to do that, isn't I, th- there? I think there's a movie to be made about, we've talked about this in the past, but the sub and third choice goalies, I think there's almost they're almost a breed to themselves. I reckon they've got their own like WhatsApp group and they've oh, got yeah, their well, own they, like, like train by committee. themselves and all do that, don't they? Yeah, you but can he, see I that. reckon the ones from different clubs, like they even when you need a new one, it's like there's just a pot of them. And you go, <laughs> can we have that one? And another club goes, Yeah, you have that one and we'll have this one. Because we'll all just box each other off. With the others, I think what everyone's got to bear in mind is you go, Yeah, well, they're on loads of money. And you're like, Yeah, but if you to have the lads that are just happy being on loads of money. They're not good lads to have in your squad. Yeah, are they, they don't sound that motivated. Because they're not yeah. that motivated, so they're not doing anything to your squad. You want the lads who aren't in your squad. And that's what I mean about this. If you listed out your players, right? I said I think I said this through the week, touched on this. You'd you'd want to you'd want them ranked nicely. So they go down from superstar on loads of money, down all the way to like your your lower paid lads who are happy doing the role. So the lads who are happy being in the squad. So I mean, I'm I'm obsessed with John O'Shea and Darren Fletcher because I was traumatized by watching Man United win everything for 20 yeah. years. And they were the lads we didn't have in our squad. We couldn't afford to keep... Lads like John O'Shea were kept happy at United by playing a certain number of games, knowing that they'd play 40 games a year at United all comps. They'd play in some big games, but they were never first choice. But they'd get boxed off well enough with salary that it would make it worthwhile. But you're also, as well, the, the flip side, you know, and it's happened to us in recent history, you don't want, like, an Artur who comes in and plays 10 minutes. Exactly. And then he's cost you all this dough when exactly. you've, you've had no return. So it's getting or that balance in the, the other squad. Ben Davis, was it? Yeah. And, like, you know, we never seen him, did we? He just cut, he just came in, got flipped, went to Sheffield United or Pre- Preston North. I don't, I don't even know where he ended up in the end. But you, we've never seen him. And so what was the point in that then? With hindsight, there wasn't one, was there? Um, I mean, it, you know, with Endo and with that conversation we just talked about, you know, takes you back to the classic Bill Shankly quote of, you know, a football team's like a piano, you need eight men to carry it and three you can play the damn thing. Um, is is Endo good enough to, to carry it? Are, are you happy with what you see? And what did you think of his performance against Brentford? I think Endo's exactly what we expected him to be when we bought him. Like the, us, me and you, probably. I'm speaking for you here, but when we when we signed him and we saw his stats and all of that, you're like, yeah, looks good, looks like good for that money. And this is what I expected him to be. I expected him to be someone who could play in the Europa League in the early stages and fill in and come on as a sub and do stuff off the pitch. Do like probably adds to training and adds to the professionalism around the place. He's another captain in the group, but isn't quite good enough when we when we look at it. Like you couldn't. If we had, like, let's say McAllister was out now, and McAllister, I feel a bit for McAllister because it feels like, did you see the, there were noises coming out of the club the other day, Joe, because Fluminese won the Copa Libertadores, and, uh, and so it's like Andre is ready to come to Liverpool. And then there were noises leaked out the club. Like, I don't know not why you interested. keep link, linking us yeah. with him. We're not interested. Yeah, I, I can imagine McAllister being like, are you fucking messing? <laughs> yeah. I just assumed you were buying him in January yeah, yeah, and yeah. I could go back to being an eight. Um, so I've got a bit of, like, feel a bit sorry for McAllister because this dawned on me on Sunday watching it. Because if he's watching that thinking, so if they don't buy a six, I am just the six now. And fair play to him, he's done really well and we've adapted really well around it. But if he got a run where he's out, injured, whatever... And Endo is your backup. Well, we're not we're not winning anything major with Endo is that in that position. I don't but think But don't you think as well, like you know, he's only been sort of, you know, missing, if you want to call it that, for like a, an handful of games. And there's someone on here who maybe he'll dive on again, get to cob on when I mention him, which I think's mad as well. Because again, literally the conversation we've just had about the different levels that you're gonna have in your squad, because that's why it's a squad and not everyone's gonna be an absolute hundred percent belter. But like Curtis Jones, dare I mention him? But you know what I mean. Like he, I, I thought he did all right, all right in the deeper role. Yeah, I, well, I don't this think is it, my I, thing. again. I don't think it's de- you know a bit like McAllister. It feels like he's shoe owned in there a little bit. But I think he's quite. I think he's developed another side to his game that he's quite clever. He doesn't do anything too fancy. He wins it. He gives it. You know, he plays it simple. And I'm sure if you asked that, or, and he's hinted at it himself, you know, that's not what he saw himself as. We know that because of the Rabonas and the, you know, top corners and the tricks and the flicks and all the rest of it. That's what he wants to be. Mm-hmm. But equally, if you're saying to him, 
But you'll get on the Liverpool side and you're a scouser and this is your dream. You'll get on the Liverpool side and play in that deeper role. I'm sure he'd be like, sad. Yeah. Come on, but, Do you know what the irony of this is? Just popped back into my head. The irony was Steven Gerrard wanted to be the, the main midfielder, didn't he? And a series of managers were like, no, Steven, you're better further up the pitch. It's like the opposite. Yeah. It's like, no, we just want to free you to be boss. And Gerrard always wanted to be a proper box-to-box midfielder. And it was like, Benitez started it being like, you haven't got enough discipline for that, mate. I need someone who's disciplined to play that role. Just let, let me let you score loads of goals. And I think you're right about Curtis Jones. But I think what sums up Endo for me is, I think, let's say every, everyone was fit except McAllister, who's been playing number six. I don't think he'd play Endo as six regularly. I think he'd come up with a different solution, which would be Trent or... Curtis Jones or Sabozlai or yeah, a combination of them. I thought, I mean, maybe I'm being harsh. And look, you know, Klopp's still saying the time to settle thing mm-hmm. and all that. And, and that might I still take that, yeah. Yeah, that definitely. might be true. That might be true. And and, and we'll we'll re, you know, we'll do what we all do and we'll reassess as we as we go along. But all you can do is assess on what you've seen so far. I think he's like he's better on the ball and with the ball than I probably expected him to be. Mm-hmm. I thought we were getting like a, you know. A bit of a destroyer, like do you know what I mean? Like we, like Lucas was on the pitch yesterday. Yeah, and you know it was nice to see him and all that. It was his first time back at Anfield since he left, and by and large, he got like a good reception both in the ground and what I read offline, online. Sorry, um, but I did see some stuff. You know, our last stuff, like you always see, like shame he wasn't a good player because yeah. you remember the big thing about him, don't you? About you know there was low like he, he seems to divide opinion. I I personally liked him both as a player and as a man, um, and I thought he'd be like our Lucas Endo. Yeah, but Lucas is another good example of this. I remember when we signed Lucas, reading into him, Joe, before he came. Yeah, so did I, yeah. And I was telling everyone, and everyone like was like, I made a tit to myself in the end because I was like, we're buying like a Frank Lampard. Like he was, he was young player of the year in Brazil. He was a fucking box to box goal scorer. And I was like, he's going to come and score us 15 goals a year from midfield. He's boss. And then he turned up and Benitez converted him to a holding midfielder. And everyone's going to me, what the fuck are you talking about? And it was one of them things where you were like, I haven't made it up. I promise yeah, you. That's no, you who never, he was. You didn't make it up. I remember, I remember like doing articles on him for, I think for well read and things like that. Um, you know, based on this is what this is what he's done there, there and there. And so this is what we can expect. And then, you know, he came in and it wasn't quite that way. But yeah, he's the, the downside, I think, to, to Endo is, you know, size, speed, um, the physicality of the Premier League. He looks he looks like he's a constantly a card waiting to happen. Like he got he, he got away with a few. Like it, you know, if you can be cute about fouls, that's a skill in itself, isn't yeah. it? I don't think he's especially cute, though. Do you know what I mean? No, he's like a wrecking ball, I yeah. think. And it's like, I don't, like you've just said, I think you just summed it up well there, where, you know, we, we will obviously continue to use him. And he was a bit of a break glass by. I think we got, we can all see that. But I can't ever see him being a regular. I think he's well, he's a squad player. Yeah, and that's, okay. That. and that's okay. And that's and okay. That's fine. And my thing about him is like, you with the time to settle in. I think there's th- certain things about the league and how it's moved on and stuff like that. And I just think if you're not th- if you're not very quick and very mobile physically, you have to be special. So like McAllister for me is not very quick, but his his footballing brain makes up for that for yeah. him. I think en- Endo probably falls short in both without being too harsh on him. Yeah. And I, th- I just think and again, we might be proved wrong and I hope we are because he's a Liverpool yeah, player and 100%. I want him to be great and he seems like a good lad and all the rest of it. Um, the, the sense I get so far is the Premier League is just a step too too high for him and he's 30. So being able to bridge that gap at 30 and I know everything yeah. Klopp said about him, you know, physicality and all of that. He's probably you know, a lot younger than he looks and blah, blah. But I just, I just think at that stage of your career, the ability to bridge that gap is harder and I just don't see it happening. And he's a good squad player. That's okay as well. Yeah. Um, and, and just to sort of to talk about like the general mood around Liverpool, I mean, um, you know, you always, you know, you, you'd always get mad shouts. And, and there was a mad shout um, that I heard on the radio from someone who sounded like they were worse for wear, but, you know, suggesting that Klopp wasn't the man and all that kind of stuff. Um, and I just sort of like, what, what I put into context, like where we are 
so far. So 27 points from 12 games. Mm. So I did a little bit of, bit of research this morning. I'm not, I'm not quite sure where I've, where I've ended after doing it, but I want to get it in because I did it. So last season, we ended up with 67 points and, and fifth place, uh, something no one was obviously happy with. So this point in the season then, we had 16 points. So we're already on 27. So, you know, 11 better, 11 better off already. Uh, and then... And we uh, were ninth. That put us ninth in the league. Yeah, we were ninth in the league. Um, and also, it's worth, you know what? I'm sorry to butt in, but it's worth just, because this is interesting to look at fresh. Yeah. It's worth, like, Arsenal were being lauded as this superpower last year. One ten of the first 12. Yeah, they were on 31 points. And City are on 28. 29 at that point. Oh, no, but now. Oh, sorry. Yeah. So, so they're the... only three points off what Arsenal were at this point last year. Yeah. And we're keeping track. We're keeping pace with them. Exactly. You know, and, and, and like last time, you know, again, to sort of, I'm trying to say, I'm trying to say, I'm trying to say we should be enjoying it and be happy because this time last season, we'd already lost five games, Man United away, Napoli away, Arsenal away, Forest away, and we'd lost the leads at Anfield. Uh, you just, know what, that's dead funny though. This is off topic because we're talking about us, but considering how much, I've got to be in my bonnet about Posta Coglu clearly, um, which is the flip of us praising him the week. Spurs were third at this stage last season on 26 points. So they're fourth this year on 26. It's, <laughs> it's not that much difference. Yeah, and and look, I know it's, it's the, the football, start, isn't it's the it? style, it's, it's the way they play. And it's the start as a new that. manager and all that, isn't it? Yeah, yeah, all that, blah, blah, blah. 21-22, uh, we finished the season with 92 points in the league. We won the League Cup, the FA Cup, and we reached the Champions League final. And after 12 games that season, 25 points. Really? So we had fewer points then yeah. than we do now? That's so, mad, isn't it? You know? So and I would say, that this is a, a shout, if we got 92 points this year, we win the league. Yeah. Potentially. I, I can see that because it doesn't it doesn't feel like at this point, based on what we've seen so far, like City feel to me, get attable, perhaps more so than ever before. Yeah, and, and people were saying that on Match of the Day and stuff after yeah. this weekend. They've conceded four to Chelsea there. To a Chelsea side who, as you know, we've talked about earlier on the show. They're not, obviously the show. still boss, but like little moments like that, I think encourage other sides then hopefully. Of course hopefully, they do, of course. You know what I mean? Including us, hopefully. Well, they're next three I'd love, to us. Us, I'd love, I'd love to, for us to go, I know it's a big ass, but I'd love for us to go there next game, you know, next game's at the Etihad and have, have a real go at them, like, do you know yeah, what I mean? Yeah, go to beat them. Yeah. Go because, all to beat them. you know, it's 2018, the last time we went there and won. And it's like, we need to sort that. Uh, 20, 20, 20, 20, 21, 69 points, third place, um, first 12, also two points less at this stage of the season. Um, so I think I think in general, the point is, we. this is a good start and it's an even better start when you've completely overhauled your midfield. Um, when, you, when everyone's written you off, blah, blah, blah. And look, we're nearly out of time and we haven't discussed Salah's latest record. <laughs> Just been waffling on. Salah's the first player in the club's history to score in the opening six home matches of a league campaign. He's got 17 in his last 15 in the league at Anfield. He's got 200 goals in English club football now. Um, most goals and assists in the Premier League this season. Um, and yet we've had we've had loads of flux. I seen this. Um, seen this in the athletic this morning and i was going to use this as a jumping off point for something uh, they said there of the regular front six that won the champions league in 2019 and the premier league a year later only one remains which is salah he's responsible for 37 percent of liverpool's premier league goals so far this season so yeah fabinho henderson Firmino, sadio mane and winaldum all gone all being replaced and here we are right up at the top with problems, uh, still not playing well, even by the manager's admission. I'll take that. Yeah, we're doing all right, aren't we? I'll take and that. I mean, again, the number of times we could talk about Salah, and we have talked about Salah, and the number of people who st I, I mean, all those people who said we should sell him, and he's passed his best. What are you all just staying silent now until like he goes shit or something? 
because I'd just like every now and then someone to come out and go, do you know what, I was wrong. I was wrong about that. Sorry about that, everyone. Uh, got that wrong badly because he's fucking amazing, isn't he? Um, I forgot I had this level of notes, you know. <laughs> Did you? Because <laughs> I was like... thinking before, it was like 10 to, and I was thinking, fucking hell, mate, are we going to do it? I've got loads more. All night? I've got loads more here. I want to mention this because this surprised me that just before we go. So Fortress Anfield, um, in the Reds' history, only in... Only from May to October 1980 have they ever won nine consecutive home games by at least two goals, which is what they've now done. Um, but also, this is the one that sort of was like, oh, so the last time anyone beat us at Anfield was Real Madrid 5-2. Nine months ago. And, and I, know there's, I know there's a break. I know there was the summer and that. But, you know, this season at home already... Won every single game, as I, as I just said. And then last season, you know, which by, you know, everyone's analysis really was not the best, not what we wanted, loads of problems, all the rest of it. Who, who came and won? Leeds United and Real Madrid, and that's it. In, in a really, in a, in a bad season. The season before that, home record, we lost to Inter Milan, 1-0. That was it. It's the only game we lost. So that's so I've just I've just I've just covered, you know, two whole seasons and the start of this season. We're absolutely boss at home. But I think that's the type of thing, isn't it? You just become and it's hard not to, and it's why people like us bang on about it. You become numb to it and you start to think that that's just normal. Yeah. It's normal not to get beat at home. And you're like, no, no, no. We've we've supported Liverpool for over 40 years. There were big chunks of that time where you would get beat at home a lot. Yeah. Well, look at yeah, United look now. At, well, look at Villa now. You know, Villa fans are rightly getting excited about, you know, they're seeing a much better side. They've got a good manager. You know, they've got a good spine to the side. They've got a lad who can score goals, all of that. And they've just they've just notched up their 13th consecutive home win, which is good. Don't get me wrong. Yeah. But it's not that, is it? No. It's not that kind of record. Like we've been unbelievable at home under Klopp, and he, you know, he's built that. He's he, he, you can rightly call it a fortress again. Yeah, you know, team. Which, well, I mean, perfect example. It wasn't before he took over, yeah. was it? Yeah, we weren't going with records like this before he took over. It's, it's phenomenal. Well, we'll leave it there. Um, so thank you for tuning in on our channel. Um, hope that wasn't too confusing. Most of you seem to have found your way over. There was decent numbers on throughout, plenty of comments. Uh, if you're listening to it afterwards and you want to join in next week, uh, it will be on the Late Challenge uh, from now on in. Um, we are looking at putting it behind a paywall at some point because we've got to make all this pay and make all this work. Otherwise, it's all just going to fall down and we'll get off and be bin men. Um, <laughs> so, uh, yeah. But next week, it will still be on the Late Challenges YouTube channel live. So do join us next Monday live at five. Get yourself in those comments. Uh, recommend it to other people as well if you like it. it. It is available subsequently as well. So if you've joined late and you want to watch from the start, you can do. Uh, it should be out there as a podcast as well if you want to listen to it that way. And yeah, we'll see you next week. Up the Reds.